Well, hello, I'm Robert Yates, the Republican nominee for the Erie County Council 1st District in Mill Creek. And I'm speaking to you on October 4th for a broadcast later on cable access TV. Um, this is an open seat this year in the 1st District for the first time in over a dozen years. And the 1st District extends from Millfair Road to Pittsburgh Avenue and from the Lakeshore down to Hershey Road and the area including uh, the Mill Creek Mall and just east of there on uh, the southeast corner of Mill Creek, just past Peach Street. It precludes 19 voting precincts and approximately uh, 40,000 residents. I want to tell you today a little bit about why I'm running, some about my biography and my background, and my views on three or four of the major issues, and then we'll conclude. I'd planned to have an interview today, but we decided I'll just do this myself, speaking directly to you. I'm a lifelong Mill Creek resident. I grew up on Chelsea Avenue in northern Mill Creek, right by the airport, right down the street from the airport fence, in fact. I grew up at uh, Lakewood Church. I've been there all my life. I went to Mill Creek schools, Vernondale, Westlake, and McDowell. And I live just a few blocks away now from where I grew up. So I've always been in northern Mill Creek most of my life. I graduated McDowell High School, 1993, and then Slippery Rock University, so I've always gone to public schools. I do have a bachelor's degree, and I also did some further education later. I've worked in the plastics industry. My family owned Yates Company Plastics Manufacturing in Mill Creek for over 50 years, and I worked there when I was a younger person, both in the office and in the factory, learning all parts of the business, and it gave me a great appreciation for the needs of manufacturers, but also how small businesses operate and then I've also worked in the field of education. I worked at the Barber Center as a teacher's aide to the autistic support uh, preschool classrooms and with disabled and autistic children. And then I worked as an educator in the Catholic and public schools as a substitute teacher for approximately nine years. Just recently, in the last couple of years, I've transferred to the home health care industry. I work with elderly, senior citizens in their homes providing services and help for things they're no longer capable of doing themselves. I have clients as, as old as 100 years old who suffer from dementia, uh, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, uh, COPD, and just uh, the variety of ailments that afflict people later in life, and I help them get through their day. I also have a second job on top of my full-time job. I am now on the staff of the church I have grew up at my whole life. I am the lay visitor for Lakewood Church. I visit our elderly parishioners and the homebound people, those who reside in nursing homes, and I go see people when they're hospitalized to keep them in touch with the church, deliver communion, and keep them in touch and keep their spirits up and maintain the connectional relationship between our congregation and our parishioners. So I have two jobs, and then this campaign is basically my third job is, uh, of course, going to county council, hopefully starting office in January, will be uh, working on our time management. <laughs> as in terms of biographical, in my background, I've done a community service such as uh, served as a site coordinator for the uh, Lake Erie Arboretum at Frontier, the International Coastal Cleanup at Cascade Creek and Frontier Park. I was asked to do that in 2007 for the first time, and I did it for nine consecutive years. I've also served as the secretary of the board of the of Koinonia of Erie County, which is a Christian organization. And I have also served as a regional chairman for Mill Creek, helping candidates get elected for two terms. And I was also the volunteer coordinator for the Erie Philharmonic. I was in charge of basically managing people and assigning them for all the different needs throughout four consecutive seasons of the Erie Philharmonic, working with dozens of people and a variety of ages and backgrounds. So that's my experience in voluntary community service and also in personnel management. At the church, which I now work for, I've been active my entire adult life and have served in many capacities over the years on church council. I've been the delegate to the annual conference in Grove City. I've done other things there. I've served on the Lakewood Preschool Board, which I'm a graduate of myself 40 years ago. And I have served there uh, in numerous capacities over the years and had experience also in personnel where we've had to interview and hire people for the church staff. And I've had experience in leadership there. So these are all 
great uh, assets to your being your elected representative on county council. I'd like to talk about some of the main issues right now. Um, the first issue, and the one I hear most about when I go door to door canvassing and asking the voters for their input, what matters to you most at the local level? The complaint I'm hearing most recently, and also a couple years ago when I first ran, is taxes. Particularly in Mill Creek because we just had our school district impose a 2.8% tax increase. And then now we are just hearing a few days ago the county executive and her administration are proposing a budget with a county tax increase. This will be the third county tax increase in approximately four years. The county council actually voted for tax increases in 2016 and 2018, which the county executive did not budget or plan for, but they were imposed anyway. So this will be the third one, and it will be voted on later this fall before any of us who are elected this year can take office. But the financial pressure on our citizens is growing, which is somewhat unexpected as the population is shrinking. The population of the city of Erie, we just learned last week, is now down to approximately less than 97,000 people. But Erie County itself as a whole has dropped from over 280,000 a few years ago down to 272,000. So people are leaving the city and leaving the county, yet our expenses and our taxes seem to be going up. The reasons for the increase announced a few days ago were basically attributed to county employees, personnel, increased health insurance cost and basically overhead from the people that uh, help us working in our government. Um, so I do hear about the increasing costs quite a lot. Uh, we do have a $457 million county budget. The county government uh, does things beyond the township and school district level, but not quite to the state level. The county funds all of our libraries, the public health department, human services such as the Office of Children and Youth, the court system runs the elections, uh, the corrections and prison system, and all those types of things. Um, I believe that we need to make better uses of our existing county assets, particularly in the current controversy with Pleasant Ridge East. Uh, the county is continuing to propose the demolition of the building and I and others I've talked to, and most citizens, I believe, favor preserving the things that we have, fixing them and repurposing them for other uses or selling them, rather than just tearing things down. I'd also like to see uh, better use of our Erie Airport. As a Mill Creek resident, as I mentioned earlier, I've lived near the airport my whole life. There was a runway expansion project several years ago, and it turns out we haven't really made effective and full use of that as it was planned. We're also finding airlines that are not willing to come to Erie because of uh, business or regional reasons, and we're losing direct flights where we used to be able to go to Pittsburgh or Cleveland or Buffalo. Now people have to drive to Buffalo and Park or Cleveland and take flights directly from there. I'd like to see us do something about getting better airline service route, and the city council and the county council appoint members of the airport authority, so we do have some oversight in that. I am a big fan of our Erie County Library System and our librarians. I frequently visit the Lincoln Library out on Manchester Road in Fairview and the Bayfront uh, Library, the Raymond Blasco Memorial Library, at least once a week. And I support everything, uh, all their new programs and everything they do, and I think we should continue to give them our full backing. I'm also uh, quite interested in the Public Health Department everything they do for fighting illnesses, uh, spraying for mosquitoes, environmental monitoring of algae blooms and everything else, we cannot shortchange them. Um, I do hear people that have had experience with the Office of Children and Youth or the Human Services Department, and they want to tell me their stories about individual cases, and I'm very sympathetic to what they have to say. Um, another thing the county needs to continue working on and hopefully enhance is economic development. As we all know, we've lost companies and jobs and we need to try to attract employers to come here. I think the strongest way to do this is by marketing our regional advantages, not that just the geography of the location between Erie, Pittsburgh and Buffalo and the assets of Presque Isle and Lake Erie, but showing what we really have here, our great infrastructure system, the highways, the railroads, the airport, the workforce here, the highly educated population we have, all the schools we have here and really 
make this a place we can market to other companies and try to get them to locate an area. Of course, the other side of that coin is what some people call Taxylvania. Pennsylvania as a state has the second highest corporate income tax in the entire country, second only to Iowa. We're at just under 10 percent, and that's a big disincentive. So this is not just a city or county problem. This is a statewide issue that we have to work on to attract employers and jobs here. I've lived here my whole life, and I know people want this to be a place where Erie County residents can stay, where their children that are growing up and going to school now can stay and have jobs when they graduate. It's been that way for my family. We've, my family's been in Erie over 100 years, and we've stayed here, and other families have been here a long time. We'd like that to be the case for other people that are young and coming up now. That's a, just a, a quick synopsis on the issues because I do have limited time. Uh, as far as our campaign, you're going to see the red and white signs like the one behind me out uh, near the streets in Mill Creek. You will see you know, a billboard over Peninsula Drive, some road signs. We're on Facebook. Please look us up on Facebook. It's Yates 2019. The title of the page is Yates Erie County Council 19. We have over 800 likes, and we invite you to follow us there and keep up with the news. We do have an Instagram account. It's at Robert Yates 2019. And we do even have a Twitter page that my social media manager, who is a young uh, McDowell Republican student, created for us. We are very glad to have people of all backgrounds supporting us. You know, in the primary, it's closed in Pennsylvania, and only Republicans could vote for me. But in the fall, I have a lot of friends and neighbors I've met over the years who are Democrats, independents, and even who have no partisan affiliation whatsoever that are supporting me. And we also have a Democrats for Yates group now with a lot of friends, families, and neighbors that I've known who are Democrats that will be backing me. And you'll probably see the Democrats for Yates logo coming up soon. And we're doing everything we can to reach the public, as I mentioned, through social media, through programs such as this on cable access and the YouTube link that will be online. I will be interviewing with the Erie Times News editorial board uh, later this month, and they will also be publishing a set of six questions they have emailed all the candidates, and my answers will be there to read, and you'll also be able to find that online. And I have been door-to-door -door canvassing since the end of July, almost uh, every day, so I'm if you haven't seen me yet and you live in my district, I will probably be coming to your house at some point in the next 30 days or so if I haven't already met you. When I go to you, I introduce myself and I ask people, what matters most to you? What are you most concerned about at the local and county level? So that's your chance to give me input and tell me what you think. I'm running because I want to restore public trust and confidence in county government. A lot of people feel that their representatives have become distant, disconnected from, you, that, from them, that they follow their own agenda, they don't listen to the people and just do what they want. I want to be a responsive listener. I don't have my own preconceived agenda. I'm here to truly represent all the people, rich and poor, young and old, all of it, everyone in Erie County. Because although we are elected only by district, everything we do at the county level, whether it's an appointment of someone to a commission, or a decision on selling land or transferring money from the health department or to the libraries or anything else affects all county residents as a whole. We're there to check and balance the county executive and administration, but also work with them cooperatively and make sure everything runs smoothly. I'm here to be your representative, and I'm asking for your vote and your support. Thank you for your time.